Hi, and a warm welcome to this uh, Oshua conversation. I have with us uh, Leticia Lin, CEO of Privity, a leading audience and campaign intelligence platform for digital signage. Leticia is a widely experienced professional. She has worked with some of the top organizations, and she's also the co-president of the La French Tech Taiwan that promotes collaboration opportunities between France and Taiwan innovation ecosystems. Uh, Leticia, I also get to understand from your profile that you had 13 year long experience working with L'Oreal. So I think you'll come with diverse experiences and I think the OH industry will be tremendously enriched by your participation in this very ecosystem. And I'm really happy to have this opportunity to have this conversation with you today. So uh, we know that year 2020 was an eminently forgettable year for businesses worldwide, right? So I'd like to know from you as to what were the real impacts on the digital overage industry in the near to medium term? And how do you see the demand for QVD products and service offerings uh, in the coming months and years? Yeah. So maybe first of all, I mean, uh, hi Rajiv, and uh, thank you so much. I mean, uh, to you and to Media for Growth uh, to give I mean Quibidis the opportunity today to share with you know, our Indian peers. I mean, that's definitely you know no one uh, can ignore uh, India as a market, and so it's really a real pleasure you know uh, for me to be here and, and share with you I mean our views. Uh, among the Quidditch team. So um, regarding your question about uh, 2020 and getting into 2021, definitely um, it's like we say in French, la palissa to say that uh, it will be an uh, forgettable year for <laughs> most of us, you know, personally and professionally. I mean, no need to say that. Um, and during that year, uh, definitely our industry out of home and digital out of home because we are basically engaging with people on public spaces out yes. of their home uh, we have been i mean uh, impacted heavily right so um now uh, definitely you know in, i mean quibities we've been in we pioneered the space and we've went through many many you know uh, phases up and down so um, it's good to have down because when you have down, you can get ups, right? So, Absolutely. so, 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 so the way we see things are always very positive, okay? okay. And 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 um, we do believe that definitely um, COVID has somehow somewhere accelerated trends. So it does. I mean, it has created some new trends, but it actually does very much accelerated underlying trends. And maybe there are, I mean, and some digital transformation happens within months, whereas it would have taken years for them okay. to happen without okay. COVID. Mm -hmm. So I think that is positive mm -hmm. in the sense that uh, definitely it has pushed our digital out of home uh, media to converge with online even more and faster. Okay, so what do I mean by that is the advertisers, so the brands mm -hmm. who are basically um, investing into our space, they have been demanding more than ever, more flexibility in our media, okay. more transparency, you know, mm -hmm. about where the data we provide to them in terms of measurement of our performance, for instance, are coming from. How do we prove that actually their objective have metrics? and not just, you know, a survey that was done, I mean, years ago, and especially in COVID, when you, the situation evolves every single week or days, whatever you have today, it's not what you had yesterday. So, right. so they're really demanding more transparency as well, mm -hmm. the publishers, uh, and also security, right? Because um, one of the key learnings they've been also uh, getting from investing heavily in online advertising, in the past years mm -hmm. is that you know with all the robots and all those fraud issues happening yes. online right. they do care about right. having their brand being right. advertised and engaging with audiences in a secure and safety manner so i think okay. all those demands that actually advertisers have been honestly um requesting for right. online uh, for quite some time, it's coming uh, to uh, the out of home space, and it has been accelerated because budgets are limited. Right, right. 
absolutely. Yeah. So, so, so I think I think that there is this convergence. Mm -hmm. And and to answer your question about, I mean, uh, for QBD, do we see that as a positive, uh, you know, evolution? We do, and we think it's positive for the industry as well. Like I said. Uh, because, you know, QVD, we have been from day one, back in 2006, really um, the advocates of real-time, high fidelity, mm -hmm. high accuracy data, because we think this is where the value lies. So for us, uh, definitely, we've been seeing our partners and clients during mm -hmm. COVID, yes, getting really challenged by the, by, the, by the crisis, but on the other hand, the network who have been using high fidelity real-time data mm -hmm. are actually uh, being able to prove to the advertisers uh, that there is a reality to their audience and basically kind of guarantee you know, impressions and, and guarantee, give confidence to the advertisers who actually during this crisis were willing to spend money uh, into their network. So those networks are getting advantage. So they've been right. getting benefits out of that capability to demonstrate the reality and prove the reality of their audience. So we're happy that QVD during that crisis have managed to support our clients to do that and to win budget in a very challenging, limited budget environment. Now. Wonderful. That's great to know. And uh, one of the key things that you pointed out, Leticia, is that advertisers will definitely look for greater accountability and a greater understanding of where their ad dollars go and what kind of returns they get. For that to happen, I think audience metrics and the audience data would become very, very important. And I noticed that Quivity has a very strong offering by way of the audience measurement platform, the AMP that you offer, that integrates with digital signage players, digital signage software, DOH networks, programmatic platforms for digital OH, among others. So my question is, what makes QVD's audience measurement platform really different from competition, considering that a lot of other players are also developing these things in anticipation that this will indeed become the only currency for doing business in the OOH or DOH space? Yeah, I mean, uh, definitely. And we see that actually positively, the fact that people are okay. developing that because that's a sign that there is a market, you know? All right. I mean, uh, we always welcome competition because that, you know, uh, uh, is a sign that actually the market has potential and that's also pushing us, you know, to stay leader, to be a leader right. and to deserve to stay, I mean, uh, uh, in the number one uh, position. So, so going back actually to AMP, so our solution about audience measurement platform, uh, like uh, I said, we pioneered actually the space. Right. So back in uh, 2006, <laughs> quite some time ago, mm. and, and so we invented that. And, and I think uh, one of the key competitive advantage we have is the fact that we pioneered this. Mm -hmm. Why? Not because we were the first one to be the first one. It's not my point. My point is more when you are the first one and you invented that, somehow, somehow you write the story together with the industry stakeholders. And right. along the way, you learn a lot. Along the way, you make mistakes. Right. Along the way, you find solutions that actually have a business sense. Right. right, because there is no sustainable uh, growth mm -hmm. if at one stage you know it doesn't bring real business value to the brands who actually are investing into that I mean um, area mm -hmm. and to the publishers who are I mean investing to equip you know their network with solutions like ours. So I think one of the major key differentiator is being the pioneer. We have accumulated so much I mean uh, know-how and best practices along the way that today are benefiting every single publishers or every single partners who are interested to get into that journey with us. Okay? Right, right. So that's the first thing. And definitely when you look at it, our platform uh, and data and AI um, are, have, I mean, have been used, are accurately used by, you know, in more than 80 countries. Mm -hmm. uh, serving hundreds of clients, a wide range of you know uh, players, you know from uh, leading out of home network such as you know uh, Clear Channel Singapore you know, in bus shelters or Patisan in Canada uh, for the transportation, going to uh, uh, shopping centers like uh, Simon Malls, you know, or Westfield in US, uh, Century in Australia, the major shopping center uh, in Australia. So we've been really basically working with a variety of um, out of home, digital out of home network out there. 
and uh, and uh, and and we also actually and that is less known uh, to mm -hmm. be frank with you Rajiv also I mean uh, present and getting more and more into retail okay uh, yes and equipping actually because screens are getting into the stores uh, to make a difference you know in mm -hmm. terms of helping you know the brands uh, the stores to engage more and drive more traffic on sales mm -hmm. and we are also basically uh, our AMP audience management platform is also actually um, capable to equip screens powered screens inside uh, retailers mm -hmm. so I would say that all in all uh, with all I mean, those years of experience and deployment, today uh, we are pretty proud at QVD to, 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 to say that we have by far the largest install base okay. uh, than actually all our competitors combined together. Awesome. So, so we're yes. really happy I mean, to mm -hmm. have newcomers in the space because that okay. is really motivating us, push us harder to reinvent ourselves and keep always uh, you know, one step further to, to, to maintain our thought leadership position. Uh, but de facto, I would say we are the standout for high fidelity uh, audience measurement for digital out of home and digital signage. Wonderful. So I think you're absolutely poised to push harder in this particular space, mm -hmm. especially when DOH networks and OH industry as a whole globally would have to be moving in this direction. So, you know, wish you the very best in that particular space. Uh, coming to the other aspect of digital out of home and uh, digital signage is that interactivity is one of the very interesting aspects that makes digital OH very, very interesting for brand advertisers. So do you really see wider application of interactive tools in the DOH space? Or are there any so, limitations? <laughs> so actually, you know, so we pioneered uh, AMP, so audience measurement for out of home, right. and interactivity, we pioneered that as well. So oh, we heavy. run actually, okay. yeah, we run uh, the first interactive campaigns in uh, the world. I mean, it was run powered by Quibity's technology. Okay. Oh, wow. So, okay. so, yeah, so, 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 so we, 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 we basically really have this vision that mm -hmm. actually when you go out of your home, Mm -hmm. You know, we should, you know, there's a picture where you have big, big billboards, you know, right. out of home, and you have this small little phone that everybody have in the pocket, right. you know, and everybody just look at like this, instead of looking at the screen. And that is, for us, it's really, uh, we have this vision that how can we make the screens mm -hmm. and the content on those screens more relevant and okay. engaging in order that people just, you know, engage with with that big billboard instead of just keeping watching their screens and interactivity mm -hmm. is for us a way to do that okay? okay that's why we've been a believer of that believer of that and run the first of its kind i mean a few years ago uh, already on that now interactivity we see basically two types mm -hmm. of interactive uh, campaigns the mm -hmm. first one is really the active one okay so it's the one where you basically play a content and what you want and what you are looking for is to have the audience reacting to that content, making okay. an action, smiling, raising hands, scanning a QR code, whatever. So you want to trigger an action for your, for, for, from your audience. So that's what we call active interactivity. Okay. And that type of campaign, mm -hmm. it's definitely you know, great to bridge online and, and, and digital out of home. And it's wonderful to create the wall, you know, what we call the wall effect, you know, to mm -hmm. really memorize, I mean, those campaigns very impactful and create the buzz, you know, on social mm -hmm. media, etc. And it's also very, so, 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 and resonating in social media. And I can, you know, now, now the challenge of those campaigns, because we also went through a lot, is that it's not always scalable, to be frank, right? Because you, you, you cannot, it costs a lot to produce a creative of those campaigns to execute it because those campaigns is the ones that you do once a year twice a year to really anchor the brand into the audience mindset right so we have plenty of that uh, example that we run like woman's edge in uk who actually won a lion can uh so an award uh, at uh, um, at can and that was against domestic violence where actually the more people were watching the content the more the face of the woman were healing. When you were stopping okay. watching, mm -hmm. then Bruce got back on the face. So oh, very yes, yes. impactful. Oh. Yes, I, right, yeah, right. yes, of course. So yes. I, I got you get the chance. Yeah. Oh, yes. Actually, that was like a, almost 100 million tweets, mm. you know, 350% higher engagement time. Right. 
right? Okay. So, so this kind of, 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 of campaign is what we call uh, active interactivity campaigns. Right. Right. Another one is the GMC. I don't know if you, you saw that, General Motors, well, car companies, so General Motors, a campaign mm -hmm. uh, in US, mm -hmm. uh, where actually, uh, uh, if I remember correctly, it was like hundreds of different content mm -hmm. uh, which uh, have been, uh, were triggered in real time based okay. on the behavior in front of the screen. So okay. if you were a woman or a kid or man smiling or raising hand, engaging or not, there was in real time, I mean, tell the made story, like giving you the feeling that the screen were actually speaking to you and engaging with you in okay. a personalized journey. And uh -huh. that campaign actually uh, managed to drive 50% higher traffic to General Motors uh, booth uh, inside the, the, the shopping uh, mall uh, during all the period of the campaign. So not only it created a wow effect and a strong engagement, but it does translate with an increase in traffic. So in business. So that are, for example, two type of examples of campaign that we rent. Now there's, like I said, another group of campaigns, which we call passive interactivity. Mm -hmm. So those ones does not require an action from the audience. Okay. However, those one does I mean, do deliver, I mean, uh, are scalable, much more than the first time. Mm -hmm. And they are also delivering massive uh, business uplift. Okay. So why? Because actually it's leveraging on QBD's technology mm -hmm. to basically adapt dynamically the content mm -hmm. based on the audience in front of the screens, based on the, the strategy of the brands, like, if a brand like Nike wants, you know, for millennials to deliver this type of content because she thinks, I mean, Nike thinks it's more appealing. And then when there's a senior person in front of the screen, it's more content B to be, to be displayed. Actually, we measure that those type of content uh, dynamically uh, triggered campaign are getting double digit higher uplift in terms of attention time, in terms of traffic and sales. So those campaigns for us are more the core business mm -hmm. of interactivity versus the first one, which are more the why, the buzz effect. Wonderful. So Leticia, do you really see a wider application of interactive technologies in the sense, are they going to be limited to specific environments or do you really see this really taking off in a big way? I think the second type, so the first type will always happen, right? Because uh, I mean, brands need at some moment of the year for their birthday, whatever, to anchor, you know, to make a big buzz. Right. So that will continue. And mm -hmm. the other one, which is most scalable, we think could definitely uh, at the end uh, being uh, down automatically uh, for programmatic, for instance. Mm -hmm. So yes. that is where I think the, 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 the potential, the largest potential is, right? Because once, uh, I mean, all the networks are, I mean, connected properly, and made available, assets are made available uh, via, I mean, um, uh, DSPs and SSPs to the brands. I mean, and those assets could be uh, purchased in real time um, via programmatic trading platforms. Then you could actually imagine that all those triggering, um, mm -hmm. made, I mean, the factors that I just described are, I mean, made available through those trading right. platforms. Right? right to the brands and to the agencies representing the brands and they could basically just tick 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 like when you do you know yeah. uh, choose all those uh, factors um, to basically uh, make sure that their uh, content and campaigns um, are shown to the right audience to right. maximize the ROI of that so I think programmatic is possible with the, those passive interactive campaign type right. oh you mentioned about the programmatic and I think uh, you know is it uh, really the quintessential growth catalyst for uh, OH? And uh, the other thing is that there are a large number of DSPs and SSPs that are there. Uh, is there a need for a common approach to word integrating these platforms? Mm, that is a, that's definitely, I mean, something that is on top of a lot of people's mind today, you know, yeah. not only in India. Mm. Uh, definitely, we see programmatic as a growth catalyst right. for a digital art of home. Definitely, right. that's the future, mm -hmm. uh, even though it is still, to be frank, at, uh, at its infancy, infancy today. Mm -hmm. uh, so a lot of people are talking about it, and that's good. And now when you look at the percentage it represents, it's just single digit percent, right, at the moment. And, and we are really uh, uh, counting on, on p do so programmatic do to right. really uh, scale, I mean, out of home overall. And, and 
win actually a higher media budget over uh, over other media. I mean, uh, med other uh, media. So um, the, it's growing fast, the fastest double GDP every year, especially in North uh, America and Australia. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is what we've been see seeing in the recent years. Uh, definitely, we see. Um, international technology, I mean, uh, trading platforms, audience measurement standards uh, across, you know, uh, the, all the different DSPs, SSPs, uh, uh, publishers, we see that as being essential and critical mm -hmm. to basically uh, support and accelerate uh, programmatic do, uh, growth. Uh, now that, to be frank, uh, is growing not as fast as all we want. So, mm -hmm. I mean, there are challenges there to come right. up with international standards, even though this is the direction everybody wants to, to go towards to, and will have to go towards to. Okay, wonderful. Uh, one and I would say, yeah, maybe, maybe to come out to, to finish on that, because I mean, uh, I would say that at the end, you know, um, our views are on, on, on having, you know, international standards. So like I said, a lot of people are working on that. There's different type of data set that can be used. Now our views on that at the end is what matters for digital out of home is to be able to be purchased by brands with um, a frictionless uh, experience, exactly okay. like online. So right. whatever creates uh, frictions is actually not benef benefiting to the industry. Okay, because uh, to be able to scale, uh, brands and agencies representing them have to be able to buy the same way, I mean, digital out of home assets as they, they are buying online. So it has to be frictionless. And we think that is what is the most important, right? Does it go or requires immediately international standard or not? Maybe not, mm -hmm. but it has to solve those, all those frictions and all those gaps. And, 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 and it has to be able, by doing so, to, to be able to allow uh, digital outlook to plug into the omnichannel strategy. Oh, yes, of, of course. Brands. Yes, yes. So brands want, when they launch a product, mm -hmm. when they run a campaign, they want to have an omnichannel view and approach. Why? Because consumers are omnichannel. So right. you have to be there where consumers, you have to be where consumers are. And you have Absolutely. to engage with them at the right moment in their right. omnichannel journey. So right. all the things, technology, automation, et cetera, that are helping standards, are helping to go towards that hmm. is basically positive. That, that, that's our view. And because that will grow revenue for all of us. And, and QVD, you know, our little role, I would say, uh, in that, 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 in all that, that vision is to provide uh, digital out of home uh, players with real time, high fidelity audience data. And, and we think that is bringing this layer of quality and transparency, uh, which brands actually like a lot from online advertising. So right, we are kind right. of glue, glue, yes. um, bridging digital out of home and I mean, a digital media. That's how we see our role I mean, in, in, in this uh, programmatic I mean, uh, future growth. Absolutely. And I think that kind of an integrated approach is really going to do wonders for the OH industry as a whole. And I think that is an expectation that that's the right expectation that can we can set for that industry. And I'm sure Quibidi will have a very defining role in that particular space as well. Uh, uh, Leticia, I also understand that you developed a campaign intelligence platform to measure and optimize the performance of campaigns. Uh, please tell us how this platform is contributing to deeper brand engagements with this industry, because you know that's a very very critical part when it comes to brands deciding on how much they need to move in the direction of OH or DOH space. So if you can tell us a little bit about the campaign intelligence platform that you have. Yeah, so actually, so we pioneered the space with AMP, audience measurement platform, which right. is basically answering the question about how many people actually saw my campaigns, how many people right. were, were actually in front of the screen. So that is the how from AMP. Right. Now CIP, campaign intelligence platform, it's more, uh, focusing on answering the question about how well actually my campaign performed. Right. So it's more qualitative insight. Right. So the purpose of that is basically to bring uh, brands a better understanding about actually how their campaign engage or not uh, with each uh, demographic groups, 
each mm -hmm. gender at different right. time of the day mm -hmm. on different locations of the screens right. and it's basically uh, aiming at providing consumer insights mm -hmm. to help the brands to uh, moving forward to optimize their future campaigns so okay. that they spend well their money okay so how do we do that we do that thanks to uh, you know by leveraging on uh, the 60 billion data that we have accumulated through the time you know in different markets in different type of venues um and we've been basically analyzing you know all those data and, and come out with what a, a proprietary smart model mm -hmm. based on actually um, those uh, the analysis uh, uh, the data sets and as we did on those to basically understand the audience dynamics and how actually different type of contents, different type of format of content, different type of, you know, uh, video or static, different type of headline, different type of even color font are basically performing in front of different type of audiences. And all those know-how, very granular level, uh, we are basically providing it in a user-friendly way, easy to visualize dashboard named CIP to mm -hmm. the marketing people. The publishers so but also their client the advertisers mm -hmm. so that they can understand very easily actually with benchmark with scoring how their campaign performed versus their previous campaign or versus other a typical average campaign running uh, in the same network during the same period of time etc to enable them to really understand how can they do better moving forward wonderful let's share my final question uh, Quibity, I, uh, uh, as far as I know, is not uh, active in emerging markets like India. Uh, whereas, <laughs> whereas we do see this Indian Overage having enormous potential to become really one of the engines of growth in this Asia region. Yeah, if I mean, there had to be any reason for Quibity to really have a large footprint in this market, what would those preconditions be? I mean, definitely, I mean, uh, we still have many countries, I mean, uh, we, we, we need to explore and, and India is on top of our mind, right? So we, we're definitely very keen to explore, I mean, the opportunities in, in India. I mean, the market over there, it's huge, the potential is huge. So that's definitely something we are now starting to look, I mean, deeper. And, and, uh, and, and, and uh, we are pleased to see that actually India um, is catching up maybe later than some other mature markets, but the chance of doing like, I mean, of coming a little bit later is actually you can learn from others. Right. And you definitely, you know, are uh, going to benefit from all, you know, the, the best practices that other markets went through before. I mean, uh, you guys and, and catch up faster. Right. So that's the benefit of also also coming you know, a little bit later, you know, right. and not sweating and then suffering. And uh, so you'll have your own. OK, I'm sure. <laughs> but, but definitely whatever have been learned before in other countries, I mean, definitely would be for you guys. And that's how we see our world as well. So. Right. So what we've been, I mean, doing now to follow more about Indian market is number one, we are closely basically uh, following uh, the Indian out of home uh, industry uh, discussions right. around, you know, trading currency, around audience measurement standards. And we've been actually talking to some of, of, of the people involved in, 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 in the association um, and sharing best practices. Wonderful. About, you know, what's happening in other associations in more mature markets. That's the first, uh, uh, I mean, our first, uh, the first, uh, the first uh, approach we have. Right. The second one is we've been actually uh, getting into very interesting conversation with uh, out of home, digital out of home uh, players in India who are actually interested uh, to use COVID-19 um, real time uh, audience data to right. measure their network and to mm -hmm. enable their, the brands to optimize, I mean, the campaigns. And, and actually we run, I mean, and, and you were one of the speakers, thank you so much for that. I mean, uh, last December, uh, our APAC conference. Right. And, and definitely we, we, we've been having a very interesting conversations since then, you know, because that enables us to have visibility. Right. Also in India, thanks to you guys as well. And, 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 and uh, I'm sure, we, I mean, you'll see, and you'll, you, you will hear much more about Quividi, uh, in the coming, I mean, months and years in India. <laughs> oh, that's very, very heartening to know. And we really hope that uh, you will come 
and make a big growth story mm -hmm. for yourself and for this industry here. And I wish you all yeah, the Yeah, we'd love best. to because, you know, I like to see you on the screens, but I definitely would prefer to see you in person. <laughs> Absolutely. Same here. Would love to have you come over and also even address the Indian industry. We do have platforms like our outdoor advertising convention, which is widely attended. And we look forward to having yeah, would love to. Okay. Your, your participation <laughs> and an opportunity to interact with you. So thank you so much for this uh, opportunity to have this discussion with you, Leticia. Maybe this is the beginning of many more conversations. Uh, let me wish you a great year ahead. And thank you so much once again. Yeah, thank you so much and wish you all the best as well. And uh, you know, in Taiwan, we are just past the Chinese New Year. So, okay, Happy New Year to all of you for the Year of the Ox. Thank you so much. <laughs>